When a person is drunk, he... Yes, definitely. Does the amount of alcohol matter? Sure. If a person is drunk, he sleeps. He has no control over himself. He loses awareness. So he's already vulnerable. Basically, alcohol lowers vibrations instantly, then it is easier to work. It is easier to attach an entity, and it is easier to take possession of a person's mind. Does it mean that it's more difficult to influence a person if he keeps his thoughts in purity? Yes, absolutely. When faced with various religions, it is very difficult to influence Muslims. They are in a constant connection with the aggregor. They do namaz every day and read prayers on a daily basis. They are constantly under some kind of a dome, so it is very difficult to influence them. When you start impacting a person, he begins to address in a prayer. Indeed, many of them are very different from those who come to church only when everything is bad in their life. They come to pray, and then for five years they forget about God, some canons, and so on. Muslims, as a rule, passionately believe and passionately give energy to their egregor, and this egregor protects them very well. That all right, bro, I got a question before we even continue the rest of the video. What is this aggregor? Do either of you yeah, know? I was going to ask that too. I don't know. Is, that, is that what she's referring to as God? Let me, let, me, let me search this up, bro. I have no idea. I mean, you can take over the floor while I search this up. Uh, yeah, bismillah. So, uh, subhanAllah, bro, the voiceover was killing me the whole time, but the message received nonetheless, alhamdulillah. That's exactly what we believe as, as Muslims. We believe that the Quran and our Salah are are protective essentially he, she described it as a dome but uh we know it's a protection against the jinn and when she does what she does she's working with the jinn she's working with the shayateen she's she's trying to get you to you know either do haram or to get the jinn to enter you and basically promote haram with you within you hmm. and when you look at certain things i don't know if it's a hadith but islamically we know there are certain things that increase the likelihood of being possessed by a jinn one is when you are obviously in a state of constant sin and you're not remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, but more specifically when you're doing things like you know zina prom promiscuous things um, like I don't want to use the term but you know doing that one action is haram a lot um, you're more vulnerable to it when you're in that state when you're very angry when you're very sad when you're in a very emotionally volatile state that makes it more easy and what mm. Islam does like with the ayah I mentioned before puts you in a state of contentment a state of um, a state of taqwa when you're remembering Allah constantly. Yes. So of course it's going to be hard for them. Correct, bro. Brother John asks, uh, can someone explain the jinn? Um, so we we did a lot of videos, bro. We got you know Abu Ibrahim Husnain, who was a uh, definitely a learned one when it comes to that. Who's a friend of uh, Tim Humble, and we went into jinn, sihr, uh, ain, evil eye, hasad. All that type of stuff. So, you know, you can you guys can watch that if you want a little bit more info on that. But before we go on, I got the definition pulled up of egregore. Basically, it's an occult concept representing a non-physical entity that arises from the collective thoughts of a distinct group of people. Historically, the concept referred to angelic beings or watchers and the specific rituals and practices associated with them. Okay, so basically she has no explanation for what's going on. So she's making things up. Basically, we're protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She can't explain it. So she's using the term egregore. Congratulations. Like, <laughs> SubhanAllah. I mean, I see, I see where they're coming from, bro. Because without understanding one thing, you're going to have a theory or model to depict it in some other way. That's why it is very difficult to work to make any kind of influence on a true Muslim believer. Is this some kind of a good egregor? Well, for them, yes. This egregor is good for adepts who contribute good energy to it. How do you sense it? For instance, you have found an energy trace of such person. What's next? Do you try to drag him somehow to visualize this threat and you fail? Or how do you do that? It disappears. I cannot get a grip on it. I focus on it, but something immediately knocks me out of the flow, just like that. Or I visualize a person in front of me clearly and can affect him even at a mental level, but some image is not created in my mind at all. I even look at a photo, reproduce an image, but it vanishes from my mind. Thus, I can clearly see that a person is covered with something.
Does this only work with Muslims? It does for me. Nowadays, there are very few people among Christians who truly believe, even those who write in their comments that God is in the soul, that they are all faithful believers, but in reality they are not. Even most often they write that all this is a sin, but then ask in a private message how to make a robin spell. Such cases also happen. A robin spell? A robin spell. What is it? It means pulling off luck or some benefits, beauty, money, success. In other words, pulling off something good from another person. There is shifting when we dump some crap on someone else, and there is pulling when we take something good from another person. Jeanne, could you please tell us if there are people to whom you cannot connect or influence them by various magic methods in any way? There are such people. If there is ritual protection on a person, it's not even possible to connect through cards. If someone has put ritual protection over him, or if an entity is in a person's service, it is also difficult to do that. It happens that a person has a strong ancestral protection. He has a powerful, prosperous, rich kin from generation to generation, and even looking at the cards, you cannot read information from him. He is covered as impenetrable. It happens. You touched upon an interesting point that when a person experiences strong emotion, he opens up to the invisible world. But what if a person diligently works on himself, controls himself, and doesn't even allow any of the low qualities to manifest? Mm-hmm. Does it mean that he belongs to a category of people to whom it's impossible to do anything by means of magic rituals? Nothing is impossible. There are difficulties. There are points that you've mentioned where it would be difficult to work with such a person. It would take a lot of manipulation to break his will. This is energy-consuming, and not every practitioner will be breaking through that door for so long. Someone will just say, hell with it, he doesn't give in. There are such cases. Is it possible that he will never give in? Mm. I mean, I mentioned emotion first, and then she mentioned uh, emotion in, in, in that way. Um, SubhanAllah. Uh, I had a point and I forgot it. But what do you guys think? It's so it weird. It's crazy. It is crazy. It's not surprising though, is it? No, of course not. It's not surprising. Um, you shouldn't it's come surprising that she would come out and talk about it. That's what's surprising that she would actually come out and talk about it like this. I don't think mm-hmm. they're allowed to do that, to be honest. Um, SubhanAllah. But um, yeah, at the end of the day, People are gonna, you know, not believe this, so we're not gonna use it to give dabble with our religion and, and tell people that, oh, look at this magician, she mm. can't tell Muslims come to Islam. Because <laughs> at the end of the day, it's it's all like ghaib, it's all unseen, anyways, and and none mm. of that really is important for the for the dawah. Uh, the reason we're watching it yeah. is for the affirmation of Muslims to remind them that this is something that's very real. She described, she literally described hasad, right? She mm. described hasad. Hasad is when you're so envious of someone, not only do you want what they have but you don't want them to have it right mm. so and she mentioned that that there's like a a, a pulling type a type where like you take something away from someone and a pushing type where you kind of throw something on someone but why does this matter it doesn't because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that nothing will strike a person except if Allah wills right that's mm. what we know right I can't think of the ayah exactly but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that nothing will basically befall a person unless Allah wills so mm. if these people are plotting against you and whatever, if something happens only because Allah allowed it to, and if something doesn't happen because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not allow it to. And at the end mm. of the day, that's all that matters. These these people, they're these shayateen, they're gonna they're gonna end up in the hellfire. They're gonna end up in the hellfire. The humans and the jinn, they're gonna cry, they're gonna burn, they're gonna scream, because they know what they're doing. She knows what she's doing. Imagine being this person who can't touch Muslims when working with the devil and doesn't come to the conclusion, oh, maybe they're on the truth. Maybe I should hop over there on their side and be on the good side. Yeah. Now, I mean, bro, and and that's the thing, bro. Like, I wanna, I wanna kind of agree with you uh, on what you were gonna say about um, that these things are are not just uh, the answer. You know, like when someone looks at it and says, "Oh, you know what? Uh, a sorcerer or a magician can't influence Muslims, therefore, you know, give dawah with this." And I agree with that. But these things are iman boosters, and I'm sure you you guys agree with that. You know, when you look at a lot of these books that were mentioned. You know, a lot of occult books don't want to get too into detail, you know, because this is a live stream. This is not edited. Can't really bleep anything out. 
But when you look into a lot of these books and, and rituals and how to attract the jinn, how they, these sahirs, these magicians do call upon the jinn, a lot of the things that they do is desecrating the Qur'an, desecrating the name of Allah, and really doing immoral, vile things, bro, including things that are major sins, um, such as the LGTV electronics uh, movement, you know? And a lot of these things that they do are very obvious to be sins, bro. Um, even people that have taken psychedelics, and again, don't take this. We're not saying take psychedelics, you know? A lot of ways to connect to Allah. We made a whole video on that. But people that take psychedel psychedelics and they understand their energy very well, you know, what a lot of them do is they say that they understand their self and their spirit and things that damage their soul. And then when they come into Islam, they're like, oh, you know what? All these things that were haram actually damage my soul. All these things that are not haram and, and are beneficial for us, they, they help me feel better in my soul, you know. So, again, you can take these things word for word as, as we're instructed by Islam. Or you can go out and, and kind of learn the hard way, but we don't we don't recommend that, obviously, you know. Doesn't give in. There are such cases. Is it possible that he will never give in? Did you have such cases in your practice? I had once. There was a man who didn't give in at all. He felt a strong impact, but didn't give in. Were you personally acquainted with him, or did you get his photo, roughly speaking? No, how to say, it was an order, but I met this person once. That man was an athlete, very hard-tempered, and he had self-control, a really tough one. Athletes and military men may have such a temper. His willpower was at such a level that it was very difficult to work with him, even through evil spirits. In the end, I refused. Self-control at the level of emotions, right? Yes, discipline, self-control, the man controlled and distinguished his thoughts from alien ones. Hazes had no effect on him, he was fully aware. Such people are very difficult to work with. There are such people indeed. What do you mean by the word awareness? When a person understands that something is wrong with him, that he goes against his principles, let's say he will never cheat on his wife, he has the principle that if there is one, then it's forever. I attach an entity that pushes him, you should cheat, you should sleep with that female client. And his principles definitely take over. That's what awareness is about. A person doesn't succumb to any provocations that are imposed on him and intended to break his will. But if someone is already attached to him, can this principles not be of his own? That's exactly where awareness comes in. You realize, how come these principles not be mine my whole life? You mean, who am I, right? Right. I lived my whole life with this. Where do these thoughts come from? When a person begins to turn on such a protective element, he immediately weakens the effect of an entity or a haze. A protective element is a search for oneself, isn't it? Yes, it means to be on. You know, it's like hypnosis. When they begin to put us into hypnosis, but we catch this moment and start reciting a poem in our mind, for example, we thus immediately interrupt the state of induced hypnosis. The same is true when working with magic. When a person begins to realize that something is wrong with him, delve into himself, try to control his emotions and follow his principles. It is very difficult to work with him. Whew. And that is it, bro. That is it. Did y'all notice the, um, the interviewer? Like his face, like th there was a part of him that like was like, is this really, is this real? And then there's another part that's just like basically soiling himself. <laughs> Someone wrote a lying witch. Is she lying or is she telling the truth about her deception? Who knows? You know, and at the end, well, no. that's all these people do. Safe. Huh? I said, may Allah keep us safe from this. I mean, Allah, I mean, yeah. Again, you know, Yanni, we don't, we don't need anything from her. Who cares? You know, she's another person, and she ends up in the hellfire. Like, khalas, why, why do we care what she has to say, anyways? You know, may Allah guide her to Islam and get her to stop doing what she's doing. But you know, she sees how, if this is true, she sees how protected Muslims are, and uh, she's not going to make the logical connection that well, maybe I should go over there, stop doing what I'm doing. Um, and I, if what she's saying is true, she doesn't even understand it, bro. She doesn't even understand it herself. She doesn't know about jinn. Why is she not talking about jinn? Or is she purposely trying to leave things out? 
or she's just making things up. Allahu alam. We don't know who the heck this lady is. Um, uh, honestly, I don't think it, it matters you know, what this lady says. And it shouldn't really be much of a, an iman booster for anyone. What should be an iman booster is just Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us about these things and the Prophet Sallam telling us to protect ourselves from them and giving us the solution on how to protect yourself from it. So the solution is Ruqiyah Sharia, read what I've been told, Surah Al Fatiha, Ayat Al Kursi, the last three surahs of the Quran, Kul Huwallahu Ahad, Kul Aoudu Bi Rabbil Falak, and Kul Aoudu Bi Rabbil Nas, three times each uh, in Fajr and Asr. Sorry, Fajr and Asr, inshallah. Inshallah. Brother Ubaid writes, Jamal Mubarak brothers, I uh, love you all for the sake of Allah. May Allah reward you for everything you do. You Habib. all inspire me more than you know. Happy. May Allah bless you. Jazakallah khair. Allahumma ameen. May Allah elevate you. Yeah, Alright boys I said we wrap up the stream right now Not much else to say Inshallah guys Make sure you tune in Sunday Inshallah day after tomorrow Sunday at 12pm Eastern Standard Time That's 5pm UK, UK time That will be the next time That we go live Inshallah And Tuesday Tuesday we're going live With Ali Dawa Inshallah uh, Same time 12pm Eastern Standard Time And keep your eyes up For a debate next week That's all I'm going to say Leave it at that all right. And with that being said, Allahumma atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa kina adhaab al-nar. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.